You're actually well, driving a lot good. more now than I was. I, mean, I got the motor built in it, so I'm sure we'll on. And I work for freaking company. And we're sitting around here, hired in the early 80s by Mazda, Bob Arnold, George, and Kamatana, to come up with ideas specifically for the U.S. market. And it was an easy thing to come up with when you're talking about four-door sedans and two-door sedans. But we all missed our sports cars. All of us had grown up with the British cars. All of us had grown up racing them, running them around. And, they, and those companies died. MG died, British Leyland died, Alpha Fiat, all of them disappeared. And so we said, there's a place to make a car like this. What, the oversimplified version? Yes. It was like uh, it was like owning an MG that would start on a rainy day and wouldn't leak oil in your driveway. Okay? It was it was all the, the good parts of an old English sports car, which they were fun to drive or enjoyable. They weren't the fastest thing in the world, okay? But if you can't go fast with 90 horsepower, 900 horsepower ain't going to help you, okay? So the whole thing was predicated on a car that's enjoyable, fun to drive, just kind of tied into it. And it, it, no matter no matter who you were, what you're doing, unless you had been embalmed, you'd get this grin driving. You know, that's the whole idea. Uh, but with the reliability of the general. So what if we come up with a car that we can drive every day, we can afford to buy and enjoy ourselves? It's kind of self-indulgent. Well, the Miata came to be with a lot of luck. You know, we had a we had a very <laughs> focused team. We had a lot of great players who all understood the concept. You know, the basic concept, Fred, it was a, a perfectly balanced, lightweight, open roadster. That was sexy, fun to drive, affordable, and uh, I think uh, Bob Paul very successfully communicated communicated that concept to Japan and all the members. It's like selling the car. Just imagine this, okay? You've got the business case, okay? You've got all the research you've done, and you go to management and you say, "We want to build this car. It's a lightweight sports car. It's going to cost this much." And they say, "What is the current market?" And you look around, you go, um, zero. You know what? There's no car like it. Now you've got guys that are established on, based on what's the current volume of the segment, how can we grow it, what percentage can we take? Well, I said, well, while there is zero, we can't expect to get 100% of the segment. There was this entry level sports car possibility. And in Mazda's unique case, because they didn't have a dedicated factory building one car like GM did with the Fiero, that one Fiero factory had to support 100,000 units a year before it got closed. At Mazda, they did flexible manufacturing. They'd have a truck at 66, 63 going down the line, and they could stick in in the next time beyond them and still make money. So I remember we sent the packs over, Bob sent the packs over, and said, Can you make money on 40,000 units a year? And they said, back, Sure. Damn right. There are certain aspects of the vehicle concept that 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 they are clear and straightforward, easily understood. You don't have to have somebody explain it to you, okay? When you have that, a car will last a long time.